Welcome everybody to the Chrono Cross Let's Play. It is so good to have everyone here on Twitch and it is so good to have you guys here on YouTube as well. We just got done doing our Final Fantasy VII Final Mix Plus mod playthrough. And uh, now we're switching gears and playing Chrono Cross. We played Chrono Trigger a few months ago and uh, absolutely loved it. It was my first time playing it. It was a blast. It was an incredible game. And when we finished it, a lot of people said you should, you know, move on to Chrono Cross. So we did the Final Mix Plus mod to help out my buddy who is creating that mod. Um, and then I decided, you know, Chrono Cross is next. So uh, this is my first time playing the game. I've never played it. I've never even seen it. I've never owned it. Never had any friends who owned it. So this is like 1000% completely blind. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. All I know about this game is that it's somehow loosely related to Chrono Trigger in some super loose and, uh, like, weird way that doesn't make sense unless you know it does. So that's, <laughs> that's the only thing I know about the game. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to play it. So, uh... I have a lot to talk about. Oh god, what are those? Okay, stop. <laughs> those things are weird. Uh, I'm gonna let this play out because there's a cutscene like all Square games. There's a video that plays if you stand on the start menu. Um, so we're gonna watch that first. Sometimes these kind of spoil a lot of the game, but I asked chat and they said I should watch it. So uh, we'll watch this real quick and then we'll start. Um, yeah, I have a lot to talk about. I just got back from vacation. Uh, my only vacation for this year. It was a shorter vacation. I only missed, uh, three days. But, uh, it was a really, really fun vacation. I'll talk more about it once we get into the game. Let's watch this first, though. See what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> oh my god, that book opened by itself. Magic. What was the start of all this? When did the cogs of fate begin to turn? Perhaps it is impossible to grasp that answer now, from deep within the flow of time. Well, it definitely still has that time... that time theme. I mean, it still has Chrono in the name, so I figured it would still be time-based, somewhat. But for a certainty back then, we loved so many, yet hated so much. We hurt others and were hurt ourselves. Yet even then, we ran like the wind, whilst our laughter echoed under cerulean skies. Epic. Talk about getting me hyped for the game. Oh my god, it's Black Panther. That panther looked like too realistic. It just looked like a straight up panther. Ah, my head. God, epic intro. I'm already hyped. That necklace is huge. It's a baby. This game seems to have uh, a real emphasis on water. It's very like water and ocean themed. Or at least it seems like it. Even the main character looks like a pirate of some sort.
All right, we got our main character, Surge. Lieutenant Surge. Do I keep it? I usually I keep their names, so I, I'll keep I'll keep Sarge. <laughs> I, might, I might be calling him Sarge for now on though. All right, hold on, I gotta reset this. Okay. Might be a little weirdness in the audio for a second. That's my capture card being my capture card. That's a temple or something. Wow, that's it? We're just in it? Huh. What is it, Sergi? You look troubled. Wait a second. If you change your name, is it does it still add a Y to the end? Or is that like just because his name is Serge? Thanks, Brayden. This is it. There's no turning back now. We come on, Serge Razzly. His name is just Kid. Or her name is just Kid. Just you wait, Lynx. Today's gonna be the day of the reckoning. Say your prayers. Not that it'll do you any good. Ha 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 ha! Sergi. Oh yeah, we're in it. How do I? What? What is this? Is this like my item menu, but I have no items? <laughs> I know it's not actually we, but I get. I guess you would say oi, oi. Oh, that's not good. So it looks like this game has a uh, a resolution issue with the menu. I wonder if I can fix that. Give me a minute, I'm gonna try to fix that. Because the resolution changes when I go into the menu, and it's gonna flip my capture card like every single time we go to the menu. And that's gonna be an issue. Alrighty, we are back. Uh, so what I did, uh, I found out that the Frame Meister that I'm using uh, for upscaling has an issue with specific PS1 games. I've had the issue in the past. I had the issue with uh, Bubsy 3. I had an issue with Legend of Dragoon, where games like to run at different resolutions on the PS1. It was a thing that they did back then a lot with like menus and stuff. Um, a lot of people that watch this channel watch Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy 7 actually has three different active resolutions it runs at. Um, the world map is at a specific resolution the uh, menu is in a specific resolution, and then everything else, like the battles, the um, in-game, you know, running around, all that's in other resolutions. So it actually runs at three resolutions, but it doesn't force your console to change resolution. It just kind of changes the, the crop. Uh, but then there's also PS1 games that actually force the resolution change, um, and this is one of them. So the Frame Meister hates that, and it tries to reset to the correct resolution every time the game does that. And uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just really annoying for like a YouTube Let's Play because you guys would have to watch my capture card constantly flicker on and off, uh, which is annoying. So what we did instead is I actually took the game out and I plopped it in my PS3. And now we're working off the PS3 upscaler, which is surprisingly good. Like, I think I really underestimated the PS3's upscaler. I've always used my Frame Meister for PS1 and PS2 games. Um, but the PS3 upscaler is, like, really good. The game actually looks incredible. So, uh, we're going to be doing it on the PS3 uh, so that we don't have to deal with the, the issues. Um, also, I reset the game because I had to. And we have a different character now. So, this third character here... Whoever's not kid is, I guess, random for this first uh, intro mission thing, which is kind of neat. Now we get to see Orca. 
What is it, Surge? You look troubled. This is it. There's no turning back now. Oh, it's like he's Barrett. Barrett incarnate. He looks like a big chef. Surge! Alright, so. Now the menu should work fine and not be weird. Also, this menu looks really neat. I like it a lot. Um, we're also working off of 16.9 uh, resolution. I know that might frustrate some people. Some people don't like the stretched look. I actually prefer the stretched look. Um, but it doesn't look too bad off the PS3 upscaler. Like, it doesn't look super stretched or terrible. It looks pretty good. Um, so I'll, I'll look through that stuff later. How do I, uh, how do I run? Do I have, like, okay, it's circle. Can I use the analog sticks at all? Can I turn on... Okay, well, if I turn on analog, I can use the analog stick, but it's still walking. I still have to hold circle. But that's better than using the D-pad, at least for me, so. Alright. Well, one thing I like about this game already is I love how it just throws you in. I'm used to JRPGs and Square being, like, slow starting, which is fine. I mean, JRPGs are usually slow starting. But it's, it's refreshing to have a game just, like, throw you right in. Especially for me, being older, I have less patience. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had a lot more patience. Now I don't have as much patience. I just want to, like, play the game. How's it going, Michael? What's well, that crystal-like thin? Some kind of switch? Bugger! So close and yet so far. She Australian? Australians say bugger, right? I was gonna say British people also say bugger, but I feel like I hear it more in Australian speak. Maybe not. We say booger. Okay. So is that... Can I... Should I... Should I not? Whoa! Crazy special effects! Oh yeah! Oh dude, Surge's weapon looks awesome. I'm like Zidane out here. I'm like Zidane out here. Okay, so... I don't know what that field effect thing is. There's also a camera button. Dynamic! Should I go with dynamic or normal? Oh, this is different. I walked up to him and now I'm like picking an attack. Wow, 92% chance and I miss. Welcome to my life. Wow, that was cool. Okay, I guess he only gets one hit. Orca's only level one. Oh wait, I hit him and then he, he ran up and hit somebody else and now I'm still attacking him, that's weird. Goodness. I have no idea how this combo system works, but it seems pretty cool. What in the world is this? What in the world am I looking at? Meteor shower? Tablet? Times one, photon ray, ice lance, cure plus one, photon beam minus one, magma bomb, times one capsule, oh my god. I didn't know we were gonna do astrophysics here. Meteor shower! Oh my 
god, the, the realism. Wow, he dead. He big dead. So, like, correct me if I'm wrong, because I didn't play this game as a kid. Oh, I hear a little Chrono Trigger in there. I hear a little Chrono Trigger theme bleeding through. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I did not play this game as a kid, but I feel like these graphics are pretty good for PS1. Like, I feel like, I mean, not like godlike, you know, like... But I feel like as a kid, if I would have used that meteor shower attack, I would have been like, wow, this looks amazing. Like, I would have been impressed as a kid with that attack, at least. And these fields look pretty good, too. I mean, this is classic Square, though. These drawn-on... Uh, drawn-on backgrounds with the sprites on top. I always thought this looked really good. On PS1, at least. It didn't translate as well to PS2, but on PS1, I always loved these hand-drawn backdrops. Like, that's part of the reason why like Final Fantasy 7 has such a charm for me. I just I love those the look of it. Well, we broke it. What the just like disappeared. Alright, let's look in the menu. See if I can make heads or tails of any of this. So I got... Oh wow, he's got like, got like a whole profile. Silent protagonist. Sounds like Chrono Trigger. Mysterious Traveler. Fiery Cook. <laughs> he's a fiery cook. Alright, so what is this elements? I don't want to remove, I just want to look at them. Is this like... Man, these are weird. I don't know how to move... Don't I have like a whole table of them? Oh, here we go. Element level five, four, three. I feel like I'm about to lose all this. I feel like this is one of those things where it's showing me, but then I'm gonna lose it all and have to start from scratch. Cause I feel like I feel like this element five is like my ultimate move or something. This definitely sounds like stuff I'm not supposed to have yet. All this stuff's like level three, level two. It's, it almost seems like magic, but I have to have, like, limit bars to use it or something. It's really unique. I like it. What do you have? Magma Burst. What do you have? Like, Prime Cookery or something? Nope, Magma Burst. He has Heal All. That's cool. Silver Swallow. Yeah, it definitely seems like I'm gonna lose a lot of this stuff in a minute. <laughs> yeah, Prime Cookery. How many items? Oh. Wait a second. Key items? Where are my regular items? Sound. Stereo. Window frame. Custom. Huh. I'll keep with the wood. Cursor position memorized, that would be nice. Accuracy selection auto manual. Huh. I don't know what that means. Control Ooh, you can customize the controller. Thank you for that. 
Final Fantasy VII PS4 port can't do that, but original Chrono Cross can. Feels bad, man. Ooh, I can turn on Auto Run, too. I'll probably do that. Uh, vibration function on... Left stick sensitivity. I don't know what that means. Can I save anywhere? No. It just lets me go in the menu. Alright, that's better. Now please don't die so I have to do all those stupid settings again. <laughs> Should do settings at a save point. Excuse me. Pardon me. I mean, don't get me started with tutorials. That's like the, the main thing I rant about more than anything is uh, games that hold your hand. Alright, I'll start saying OI instead of WE since it's obviously OI. What the bloody hell just happened? What are we doing out here? I'm not doing a British or Australian accent though, sorry. Wow! Bugger! We're so high up. Is this thing floating? Did it feel like your body passed through the floor just now? There sure is some fort. A uh, surge? Or a surge. You alright, mate? You've been acting all weird. Who knows what's up ahead, so just stay on your toes, eh? What's up, Dominican guy? Well, that doesn't sound good. Ooh. Transitions the video really nicely. What the? You ready? No. <laughs> That was the greatest timing of all time. Good morning, Serge. Come on, sleepyhead, get up. And now we lose everything. So we just had a, a flashback or a flash forward to me killing my friend and then now we're just like, oh, nice, nice place. I ain't gonna let it get to me, I'm just gonna sleep. <laughs> hey, good to see you, Gordo. Thank you so much for the three months. What the? Why did I jump? Uh, Dominican guy, appreciate it, man. Enjoy your brand new uh, blue material match. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh... I rant about tutorials and the difficulty of games more than anything else. I don't think that, like, I have the, uh, yeah, I'm meeting with Lena. Lena came by to see you if you were up, but you, young man, were still off in Never Never Land. You shouldn't break promises like that. Girls can be, okay, why do I, why do I always have to start off these games being a jerk to my girlfriends? That's how every Square game starts. You're a jerk to some girl. Tell me I'm not wrong. Final Fantasy 7, you're a jerk to Tifa. Final Fantasy 8, you're a jerk to Renola. Final Fantasy 9, you're a jerk to Princess Garnet. Every square game, you're forced to be a jerk. I don't like it. I like this village though. <laughs> My god, he's right. <laughs> okay, well, Renola 
deserved it, yeah. Well, Princess Garnet deserved it, too. Well, not really, but... As soon as she changed her name, she deserved it. Humana, Humana, Humana! She sure is pretty! What a knockout that dancer Mickey is! The poor town of Termina has its share of dancers, but no one, I say no one compares to Mickey. But mind you, I've never actually seen Mickey dance. Oh, I would love to see them jiggle. Or, I'm talking about her arms, of course. Yes, I love to watch uh, girls' arms jiggle. It's my favorite. Also, she is 100% going to be a party member at some point. Just saying. Uh, but yeah, like, so I think my opinion on tutorials and the difficulty of games is not the, like, the end-all, be-all correct. Yeah, I think it's an opinion. But, like, it's the thing I, I rant about the most, I think. Because it's just... I think that every game should be harder than it is, and I think that every game should have a very, very small tutorial. Because I think the fun of it is learning how to play it. Um, but I could see people's arguments for like, oh, I want my kids to play it, or oh, I don't want to have to, you know, spend 30 minutes figuring out how to play because then I get bored of it. Like, I understand the need for tutorials in some aspects, and there's some games that a tutorial is pretty much required. But there's good ways and bad ways to do tutorials. I actually want to do like an entire series on tutorials one day. I just have too much going on right now. But one of, one of the one of the things I really want to do uh, someday is is start a series about tutorials, how to do them and how not to do them, and give some actual examples of games that do tutorials well and don't do tutorials well. Um, but like, I think most people are in agreement that new games are just the worst thing ever when it comes to uh, tutorials. Like, I mean, the amount of games I've played on the PS3 or the PS4 that tell you to use the analog stick to move is baffling. You know, like, like it's truly baffling. And, and I don't think, it, like Magic Man said, maybe it's just us getting older and, and growing up with video games. It's just kind of a collective conscious kind of thing. But I don't think any kid on the planet is like, oh, thank God it told me how to move with the analog stick. Like, you look at a controller and you already know. My, like Benjamin, my one and a half year old son that has zero clue what a video game even is, I gave him my controller when we were playing Celeste. And the first thing he did was touch the analog stick, and Madeline moved. And he instantly got it. He instantly started, you know, jiggling the stick and watching Madeline move on the screen. Like, if my one-and-a-half-year-old son can do it, there's no need for a futuristic PS4 shooter game to be like, Lieutenant Serge, you need to tap the, L, the left stick to move left, and tap it right to move right. And use the right analog stick to look around. Look at these targets. Like, like how many times have you played a game where it made you move the right analog stick to look at targets? And that's like one of your objectives. Look left, now look right, now look up, now look down. It's like... <laughs> half the time when a game makes me do that, I actually want to quit like right away. Like it's, it's actually that frustrating. I have some great elements. Would you like to take a look? Show me your elements, girl. That's my favorite pickup line. And even stuff like press X to jump is just silly to me. Like, yeah, maybe if you're playing like an RPG and they might not know they can jump or something, but it's like, who doesn't press the X button immediately after starting a game? And if you're playing a platformer, you really don't have to tell us how to jump. Like, you just really don't. When I was a kid and I picked up the NES controller and played Mario, I did not need the game to tell me how to jump. Like, I figured it out, you know. <laughs> should I buy Cure? I wonder if I should buy Cure. I have just enough to buy it. Or I could buy tablets instead. It says I already have a Cure, so maybe not. I could buy Fireball. Or Aqua Beam. Let's buy Fireball, because why not? Can I equip this this bad boy? Okay, so 
Element 1 is Tablet. Element 2 is Cure. Element 3 is Fireball. Did I get plus 2 because I put it in Element 3? Is that how this works? Hmm. Okay. I think I'm starting to get it a little bit. You love this game? How dare you. <laughs> get off my chat. I can't believe you like this game. I can give you three reasons it's bad right now. See? Worst game I ever played. That kid just committed suicide right in front of us. Oh, never mind there. He just went. <laughs> oh, it's you, Surge. Beautiful day, huh? You caught me dozing off there. By the way, Surge, do you like the sea? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, the sea sure is great, but just remember, Surge, don't take the sea too lightly. Usually you'll find the sea to be vast, deep, full of strength and energy, yet kind and gentle. But once it becomes angry, it can turn into the most frightening monster you've ever seen, engulfing everything. Close your eyes and prick up your ears. Can you hear the cries of countless men swallowed by the sea? The hidden secret the sea whispers? I recommend you learn to sense the mood of the sea. That's if you don't want to join the fellows already at the bottom. Man. Wise words. I've lived in this sea village my whole life probably though, so I probably already know that. You're late, Serge. Sleeping in as usual, I suppose. You promised you'd go some get some Komodo dragon scales for my necklace, remember? Since you were late, my mom asked me to babysit the kids. Woohoo! Sergey Lena, look at me! Come on, you guys should join us. It feels really good. Unlike the rest of you, we're not here to play. Don't swim out too far now. Okay, gotcha. Haha, <laughs> I got the babysit. Kids sure have it easy. Remember when we were like that? Not a single care or worry on our minds. How each day lasted an eternity filled with newness, fun, and excitement. Is newness a word? But the important thing not now is not our childhood, but my Komodo scale necklace. Yes, your necklace is so much more important than our childhoods. Yes, we have to face up to reality and live each day anew. So I want you to go to Lizard Rock and get some scales for me. I would join you, but I saw the kids to watch. It's your fault you were late. Once you collect some Komodo dragon scales, I'll catch up with you in Opasa Beach. Is that okay with you, Serge? Yeah, sure, I'll just go fight some freaking dragons for you. God. The struggle, man. I think three should be enough. Good luck, Serge. I'm counting on you. The stuff guys do for love. Yeah, I'll just go fight some goddamn dragons so your necklace can look slightly better. That's fine. Sounds like a reasonable trade. Can I save yet? No idea what save points look like in this game. Yo, Retro with the six months. My man, you got that brand new Buster Sword badge. Congrats, dude. Why you all look at me like this? And yo, we also had PS4 Alex right before Retro with the 22 months. My oh man, thank you so much for the support. Two more months to get that beautiful Black Materia badge. Oh god. Ancient, ancient fellow here. Radius. That's like the oldest sounding name. His name is Radius. Oh Serge, how goes it? How would you like to join everyone for my lecture? Today's lecture is The Fundamentals of Attack in the Art of Elements. Yeah, sure. This game seems to have an interesting battle system. I should probably learn it. Excellent! A true man you are. Well then, let's get on with it. Da -da -da. Oh ho ho! Come on, Surge, don't hold back! 
Gotta love how this game has a really unique battle system and yet the tutorial was still totally optional. Take this, old man! First, here's some basic advice on attacking, so listen up, youngin'. You know that the three different attack levels, weak, strong, and fierce, each have differing accuracy and hit percent values, don't you? Every time you hit your opponent, each of these values increase to make it easier for your next attack to make its mark. A good strategy is to start with weak blows, then have the highest chance of succeeding, and then build up to strong and fierce blows. So rather than attacking willy-nilly, you should aim to build up your hit percent. If your fierce attacks don't hit home, you're just wasting your energy. Oh-ho, oh, you're not even close. Don't be trusting in your hit percent too much there, boy. As long as it's not 100%, you still run the risk of missing continuously, don't you? Sometimes it pays to muster up the courage to use strong and fierce attacks straight from the start, too. Okay, but why was I only allowed to attack once? Next, let's check out the use of elements. When you use an element, the color of the element's attribute remains on the battlefield in the form of a field effect. Huh. Each time you consecutively use the same colored elements, the effectiveness of the color element group increases. Here, I'll show you. Let's fill up the field effect attributes with the color blue. Try using a blue element after me. an epic cure. Hey there! Hurry up and turn all the field effect attributes blue for crying out loud. I just did it! Don't you know how to use them elements or something, youngin? If that's the case, then it's... Listen up, boy. It takes some explaining. I just did that! Your current level is the number that appears above the level symbol under your name there, son. Oh, I nearly forgot to tell you, you won't accumulate any power unless you actually succeed in hitting your opponent, so be careful, you can't afford to miss. Discharging this accumulated power is what using elements is all about. So yeah, I was right, it's like magic in this game is almost like a limit break where like you have to build it up. Once you build up some power, you will be able to choose the element option from the battle menu. That's actually really interesting, so that you can't really like heal all the time. You have to be, you know, you have to have your level up high enough so that you can use cure. Unless, I guess, you put Cure on level 1. If you're even allowed to do that. When you select the element option, gray-colored rectangular plates appear on the screen, don't they? These plates are the elements you currently have allocated. So why don't you try using one of the... I did! Already! They won't disappear when you use them. You just won't be able to use them again for the rest of the battle. Oh, you can only use each one once. Once you enter another battle, you'll be able to use them again, so don't hold back now. But even though I say this, I still have to stress that you've got to consider the appropriate time to use your elements. Otherwise, you'll never be able to beat some of the harder enemies you're bound to meet. You gotta form the proper strategy, boy! Oh, but wait, I'm forgetting something important. It must be my old age. There are some elements that disappear in a puff of smoke each time you use them. The element times one tablet is just one example. These are called consumable elements. Yeah, okay, I figured. However, the benefit of such consumable elements is that you can allocate up to five of these into the same element grid space. Doing so allows you to use several of them in each battle, unlike basic elements which normally can only be used once. That's why consumable elements also have a number. Okay. The number will decrease as the elements are used up, however, after each battle you can restock more. Okay. I'm sure you'll notice that each time you use an element, your element power level, as shown by the level number, will go down. It's just simple subtraction, really. use elements anytime so long as your stamina value is above one. So in this case you'll be able to use elements with a power level of two right after using the times one tablet element. Do you get the gist of it, Sonny? Now do you see the importance of developing good battle tactics? You should build up a little power and then use an element. Build up a little more power then use another element. Repeating this over and over. That's okay. Or you can build up your element power to its maximum level and unleash a barrage of elements one after another. Use whatever strategy you think will work to defeat you the enemies you come across. It's up to you. 
There are hordes of monsters out there that you'll never be able to defeat by physical attacks alone. Okay, but you haven't told me what the field effect does yet. Well, sorry for the long lecture there, Sonny. My explanation of elements is officially over. Why don't you try to use one now? I just did. I can only use my tablet. I don't want to waste my tablets. I'm not sure what that, like, gold text means, either. See, the field is completely blue now. Any blue elements you use now will sure pack a punch. Okay, so I guess it's just... Uh, it makes them do more damage. <laughs> oh, 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 was that too much for you? Sorry about that, youngin'. Conversely, when there are a lot of blue in the field effect attributes, the so elements of the opposite color red will be weakened. Oh, that's interesting. So try to discern the enemy's attack pattern and fill up the field with the opposite color of his attacks as a form of defense. The strategy of using elements is sure to come in handy, so put it to good use, Sonny. Gee, thanks, Grandpa. For killing me. Well, my fireball ain't gonna do much damage now. Oh ho, what was that? You learned something there, boy? Anyway, I guess it's time to bring the lesson to an end. Here you go. Ha! Is he gonna kill me to end the le- What? Wow. <laughs> I need to end the lesson. You're dead. Violent. I don't know, I actually really like it. So, like... You can only use your, your spells one time in a battle, which is cool, because it means you're not just... Like, a lot a lot of RPGs, I've realized over the years, is really all about just forming a good enough defense to where you can heal before you die, and then you kind of just automatically win. Like, that that's a lot of the fights that end up happening in Final Fantasy VII. Like, as long as you can heal yourself before you die, you kind of aren't going to lose, and you can just, you know, stall out until you eventually win. You can't really do that in this game, or at least it doesn't seem like you can, because you can only cure once, uh, other than the items. I mean, if you have enough items, maybe, but you can only equip up to five. So I could use, like, five tablets, and I could use cure once, and then that's it. So I gotta kill him before I run out of healing. Um, it also seems like you don't get like, just regular potions. So I can't just, you know, get 99 potions and just, you know, use potions forever. So I like that a lot. It actually sounds like that's going to make the game a lot more challenging. Um, and then I also really like the element system where if, if the enemy is using fire, you can use water, not necessarily because he's weak against it, but because you can build up a field effect of water, and then when he uses fire, it'll do less damage. So that's really neat. I like this battle system a lot already, and I, you know, just started. How's it going, Irvin? Good to see you, man. Pooped already, eh? And you're still so young. Oh well, don't let it get you down. Come again anytime, Sonny. I still have to talk about my vacation. I've been so, like, enthralled in the game. <laughs> oh, also, before we go any further, I have to thank uh, Crash Zero. Uh, Crash Zero actually donated... Uh, this game to me. Uh, when we finished Chrono Trigger, a lot of people were saying we should play Chrono Cross, and I said, okay, that's cool. I'll order the game. And then Crash Zero PM'd me and said, you know, hey, I'll send you a copy. So he actually sent me this copy of uh, Chrono Cross here. Um, and he also sent, in the, in the case... He sent me his own uh, mix of the orchestra songs. So that was really neat, too. So thank you so much, uh, Crash Zero. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, yeah, so uh, my vacation. My vacation was uh, really fun. I Like I said, I went on a, sl a smaller vacation this year. Usually we go on a week vacation, but we only, we only went on like a five-day vacation, so I only missed uh, three of my normal work days. Uh, what the heck is this thing? And why is this girl following it around? 
Oh my god, that thing is terrifying. Me am a bit busy right now. Maybe next time. Next time what? Um. Oh, what was that guy doing in the weeds? Uh, so we went, we went to Pennsylvania and uh, chilled near Erie. And uh, we went to, we did a couple different things, but honestly, it was just a really nice vacation because uh, we got there and it was raining. And it said we were going to rain, uh, it was going to rain like all week. Like it looked like it was just going to be a rainy mess. And back in Ohio, where I live, it literally flooded more than it's ever flooded before in the state of Ohio all week long. So it was just downpouring rain the entire time I was gone. Uh, but luckily, in, uh, in Erie... It rained the first day we got there, and it rained the day we left, but the two days that we actually did stuff, um, it was beautiful. It was like 70, no rain, it was like perfect weather. So uh, one of the days we went to a zoo, and the zoo was really nice, it was a small zoo, and it was only, uh, it only took us like three hours to walk through the entire zoo. But we got like way closer to animals than I ever do going to the Cleveland or Akron Zoo by me, the bigger zoos, or the Columbus Zoo even, which is like a huge zoo. Uh, huge zoos are great because you get to see a lot of animals, but like, I don't know, this zoo was great because I actually got to see animals up close and uh, Ben like basically touched a kangaroo, which was awesome. Um, and like most of the, the animals were right up against the glass, we could see them like really well. A lot of times when I go to bigger zoos, I don't even, like, see any animals, so that was cool. And then, we went to an amusement park, um, called Waldemir, and this amusement park was awesome. I have lived pretty much an hour out of, uh, Cedar Point my entire life in Sandusky, and so I'm used to Cedar Point. I'm used to, like, giant amusement parks. Cedar Point's... I don't know if it's the biggest amusement park in the world, but it's close, and it has a million roller coasters, and it's like a huge, huge park. So I'm used to like the big park experience with the Millennium Force and the Top Throw Dragster and all these record-breaking roller coasters and, and all that. Um, so I didn't really think much of like this tiny amusement park, but I gotta say, I had more fun at this tiny amusement park than I think I usually have at Cedar Point. Because Cedar Point, it's like you get there and you're like, okay, I want to ride the Maverick. So you walk like 25 minutes to get to the back of the park where the Maverick is. Then you wait in a two-hour line and then you ride the Maverick. And then you're like, okay, it's lunchtime. And then you eat lunch and then you're like, what else to do? Like, I'm not trying to like rag on Cedar Point. Like, Cedar Point's a lot of fun. But Waldemere was awesome because everything's so jam-packed. You would literally get off a ride and just walk right into the line of the next one. Uh, ride and there were pretty much no lines at all so you were just constantly riding rides like just you know there was never almost never a downtime we were waiting and they had like all the classics they had like the boat and the, the scrambler and the train ride and uh, the the Matterhorn and uh, Ferris wheel you know, just all the all the classic uh, rides, all just like jam packed in this tiny park, so that you're just constantly riding stuff. And uh, there were a bunch of kid rides, so I could ride with Ben, whereas Cedar Point has like nothing at all. Um, I could ride every single ride with my wife because she doesn't really ride anything at Cedar Point because everything's got to be giant and huge, and she doesn't want to ride it. But there, everything's like tiny. They have three roller coasters, and all of them, well. My wife didn't ride the the metal roller, the steel roller coaster because it had a spinny contraption on it, but um, she rode the two wooden roller coasters and rode like most of the other stuff. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It was just like a really fun family time. Whereas Cedar Point's like we're just gonna go to ride that one huge roller coaster, and sure that's a lot of fun, but like it was way more fun for the family at uh, at Waldemir. So I, I just really really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. And it was like never a downtime. I just constantly got to like ride stuff. Camp Snoopy's okay, but again, it's like 20 minute walk to the back of the park and it's like 
secluded in this little area and they have like three rides and that's it. <laughs> so, but not to rag on Cedar Point because I love Cedar Point. I grew up on Cedar Point. I went every year for like 10 years, but it was just a nice change for me. It, instead of just this these extreme coasters, it was just like a bunch of little fun stuff. Yo, my name's Toma the 14th, but people usually put the Great Explorer in front of my name. The Great Explorer Toma. Oh, that's his name now. <laughs> I was just looking around for treasure. I have a sixth sense, you know? Yo, I wasn't gardening. I uh, was really looking for treasure. Yeah, he's gardening. If you want to record what you've done so far, step up to the re record of fate and open up the menu. Then select the block you want to follow the door. Okay, so I, I found a save point. I gotta wait in line for the save point? Wow. What do you mean, stop getting in my face? So just wait in line. How long does it take you to save your game? God, it's like Cedar Point in here. Unbelievable. You know what? I'm so mad I'm not even going to listen to you talk. Can't believe this. Finally find a save point, can't use it. This game sucks. Where do I go to get these dragon by this way, huh? Well now, you're an Arnie. What brings you to this quiet seaside village? Oh, it's you, Serge. Wow, it took you that long to figure out who I was. Just don't be going near the Hydra marshes to the east if you go outside. Don't want you to run to those evil dwarves in that Hydra now. Oh, I'm going. I'm going straight to the Hydra. Get down! We have to go to Arnie! Oh my god, look at this world map. I'm as big as that entire lake. This world map looks sweet. Can I, like, look around it, or... Oh, let's save first. Yeah, I see this game took a lot from Chrono Trigger in terms of, like, having amazing world map music. Ew, look at that save block. It's like the ugliest face. Oh, I actually hear a little Chrono Trigger in there. God, this game is like... This game is worth it just to hear like the, the Chrono Trigger themes mixed in. <coughs> this is the main theme. <coughs> mm. God, first my coffee tries to kill me, then I spill water on myself. I'm dying. Somebody call for help. Call for backup. I need backup. Seriously, though, can we just listen to this world map theme for a minute? That's amazing. Lizard Rock. <laughs> I have a drinking problem. I do. It's because I'm leaning back while I'm drinking. That's not a good idea. Get the shell out of the way. Yeah, push that thing. Get wrecked, shell. God, even this theme is groovy.
Oh god. Three versus one. Hardly fair. Beach bum. Sand to squirt. Wait a second. They have different genders? What could possibly be the reason for that? Is there like a... A uh, charm attack or something? I went after the female one first. I'm no longer politically correct. So I still don't get this goal. He didn't explain why, like... Sometimes... The text is gold. I don't know what that's about. Take a fireball. Yeah, I mean, if it's not spoilery, uh, or if they don't explain it, you can go ahead and explain to me what the gold text is. That would be helpful. Why does it say at? What, what is this, a website? At humor? At fang? Will they tell in the future? I found a fireball in a chest. Oh, the, fu the chest disappeared. Gold uses up the last of your stamina? Oh, okay. I'll pay attention to my stamina next time. That'll probably make more sense. Okay, so what's the point of having two fireballs? I guess there isn't really a reason for two fireballs. Unless I just want to be able to use Fireball twice. Oh my god, there's so many enemies walking around. So, do you guys prefer... Press 1 in the chat if you prefer random battles. And press 2 in the chat if you prefer, like, enemies walking around and you run into them. This has been like an ongoing discussion back from when we played Wild Arms. Because like, we played Wild Arms and then we played another game right afterwards that had like the walking around effect. I think it was Mystic Quest. And I, I still don't know exactly which one I prefer. I guess it depends on the game really. Alright, I got way too many 1.5s and 3s to take any of you seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it depends on the game a lot, but I don't know, it is kind of nice when the enemies are walking around because you can actually, like, dodge them if you don't want to fight them. Like, for example, if you're going back to a previous area that you've already been in, you can try to avoid the enemies so you don't have to keep fighting, like, enemies that are way below your level. Like, I feel like dodging enemies is, is pretty fun. In most times. I do feel like it's kind of lost when... Like, I've played several games where... They have this mechanic. What the? I've played several games where they have this mechanic, but there's, like, no way to dodge the enemies. Which I think is kind of silly. Like, if you're gonna have the mechanic, then have it be... You know, give us the, the option to be able to dodge enemies at least most of the time. Silver loop. Okay, I love how, like, the chests are very animated in this game. <laughs> like, the first one I grabbed disappeared. This one's, like, sinking. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I got that helmet, too, that I never equipped. 
Improves hit percent. That seems really good. Since that's like a big deal. 